All right, welcome back, guys. <clears throat> I have uh, I have decided that we're just gonna go ahead and get another uh, feeder fishing start. This just seems like such a good deal, um, and I think it will be really nice having two feeders with this much strength. Uh, it'll allow us to start to try to catch some bream chub. I mean, some of the fish that are worth a little bit more, you know and uh, be a little more comfortable a little more versatile i think it's worth the 149 even though we could continue to save for like the next upgrade up uh it's all that's always the balance right it's like when do you upgrade uh or when do you sort of take try to take the next step and save a little longer but for our second feeder and what this will also allow us to do in some situations when we want to throw a third feeder out instead of using a float we can do that but uh, let's go ahead and get this and then we also want to get the stronger line again, which is the 5.6. And let's set that <clears throat> set that up here. We'll unpack it. And let's go ahead and put that in that place. Um, so the Sorrento, we can keep that... Um, we ought to just buy another mesh feeder. Actually, we probably want to get a couple of cheap river feeders for this place. But let's take the hook off. Let's see how much those are. I know we need maggots. So those are really cheap. And let's see how much the, um, the classic feeders are that are okay for a river. Yeah, so they're cheap. So we're going to get two of these. What this basically does is for a very affordable, allows you to fish in a uh, current without having having your uh, cage like bounce all around and drift down the river. So we know we're going to be fishing here. Let's go ahead and um, switch that out. We're going to keep the 5.4 liter on. I'm not sure about hook size and all that. I guess let's start off with like 14 and we'll go maggots on one. And let's put the stronger line on this one. The river cage. We may need to make some more crucian gibble mix, but we can wait on that. Um, we'll put this leader on. So this leader, again, a little less strength than the line. And in the leader strength, at least, is right under the Lacerti. And all that is under the strength of the rod. We'll keep 14 hook on. And we're going to put red worms on this one. So we need to keep digging for that. It's getting to be nighttime. I don't know what that will mean for this spot. So the spot we're trying out came from a moon 24. And it's uh, 107-100. Let's see if we can find that. I'm assuming it'll be on this side of the river. Most spots are for winding. I haven't tried this spot, or if I have, it's been years, you know, but let's go see how it's looking. I think this was supposed to be like a, uh, I think a lot of fish were here, but including like maybe chub and uh, possibly bream too. So this could be interesting. Uh, 107, 100, clip 7 to 9. So it looks like he was using a size hook 10. Let's just see what, what, how good the spot seems for me right now. And then we can always make some adjustments to hook sizes and all that once we see how it's going. All right, so if 107, 18 is over here, or whatever this is going to end up being, then I think it'll be up on around farther. Once the river bends back, I guess. Let's see. Goodness, maybe not. Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, is this over by the, uh, the tree branch or whatever? If this is by the tree branch, that'll be funny. I remember when I made a video on this spot. Oh, I don't know. 
a year ago or something. Yeah, okay. See that in the water right there? All right, let's see what else he said about it. Um... So actually, I think when I did it, I was actually a little closer to that. So it might not have been exactly this spot. Uh, so let's try the, let's try an eight clip sort of right in between. Actually, yeah, let's do an eight clip. So are we into a hole or anything? No, it's just kind of right out here. Let's just see what happens. So we've got red worms on one, maggots on the other, 14 hook on both. Um, that was quick. And then we'll just throw in, yeah, we'll just try worms for now. How deep do we want to go? We'll try one meter, see if that works. Well, that was a quick bite. Let's see what this is. So we're kind of hoping maybe you see some white bream. This time of night, we'll probably see rough. That's awesome. And, uh, oh, I need to put more ground bait on that one. So that was on maggots. Kind of need to keep track of if maggots or red worms seem better than the other at different times. So we're drifting with the current on the float. It's... Um, it's pretty manageable doing this on one. Uh, is that a rough? No, it's a little white bream. That's awesome. Uh, if you're trying to do with more than one, you probably want to get bolo, bolo rods to, but you can do it on one pretty manageably. I'd say even with a telestick. how fast we're getting bites even on the on the float here it's awesome Nice little eyed. So, so far maggots are uh, outpacing red worm. We'll see how that changes though. We'll give it some time here because it could change during the day, uh, the daytime bite. I also wonder if there are white bream here, if on the red worm we should even go like smaller hook But thanks to a moon, I'm, I, was, I was wanting to be able to give you all some winding rivulet uh, tips. And uh, I just don't spend very much time here. So I'm, I'm not always sure about spots here. But uh, this has shown some promise so far. It just gives you access to a whole nother list of cafe orders when you've done a lot at Mosquito. There's a nice white bream. And again, that was on maggots. Let's just check the um, red worm. Yeah, still nothing on red worm. Might do better during the day. I don't know.
Sometimes bloodworms work really good here. Uh, I don't know about down this far, but up higher on the river, sometimes float fishing with bloodworms is nice. We'll see what happens. Obviously, this is also a good spot. Like if you don't want to float fish, but and just want to do two feeder rods, you can use you can do spin fishing, um, which could be pretty fun. Might try a little bit of that. See kind of what little uh, spinners might be on the weekly list here. Well, it might be hard to look at the weekly list here because it's got to be fish that bigger versions aren't caught elsewhere. Yeah, so far it has been all maggots. Oh, finally red worms is getting something. I spoke too soon. All right, let's see what that is. Looks like an aggressive bite. Let's listen to it pull it. All right, let's see what red worms got, got us into here. Yeah, that looks like a chub to me. That is nice. Nice little chub, 1.6 kilos. So bloodworms got, well, I don't think it got any bites. I was busy trying to work on that chub, but let's watch it this time and just see. If not, we'll switch, maybe try maggots on float. We also could be like, I don't know, like the whole river is one meters in the, in, so we're a little deeper in some of this part. We could go one and a half maybe, set it a little deeper. Right, yeah, let's try maggots. Maggots might just be the answer to everything here at Winding Rivulet. I don't know. Is anything moving there? Got something on maggots. Baby chub. Keep it a little closer to us instead of that wide swing down there. Red Worms has something on it. Oh, maybe not.
It's also a chub. So the chubs are definitely here. Again, I want to see kind of during the day what happens. It might be worth going to a size 10 hook. Try to get a little nicer chubs. There are going to be fighters though. All right, let's see, uh, let's put back worms back on there. Let's see if we go to one and a half meters, if anything's different. We'll kind of get it out there in the deeper part, see if it sits right. Yeah, it looks good. I need to check these feeders too. They both kind of got tension on them, but I don't think anything's on them. like seeing these big old rough I wonder if that will stay it might float into a deeper part I don't know right on the edge it looks like there we go yeah maggots are really doing well here in terms of bite rate but the size is small which could have to do with my hooks so this is just like sitting on the ground right now So we really got to get it out there a little ways to get it if it if it's at one and a half meters. This spot doesn't seem to be great for floating, at least in the night. Now this whole thing could change during the day. I think the chub typically do bite pretty well at night though. So I don't know. I don't know what this will be like during the day. But yeah, we could try some spin fishing. Of course, we could also we could also um, put our third feeder in if we can't get much going on the float. But let's just try this a little bit. It's a little early still, but. Wow, that sounds like an angry chub to me. Yep. It's a nice one. All right. Probably catch, uh, a lot of chubs here. When in Rome, I guess we'll do a little spin fishing. All right, 
So this is red worms. We really want to see something from wet red worms here to justify not just, uh, ooh, that's a nice rough, not just using maggots, because maggots seem superior so far. We want to sort of run this right sort of through that log area. Get the speed up notification. Start and stop a little bit. A lot of times you'll see the bites right after you've stopped or started. See it kind of sinks to the bottom, at least this one does when you're not when you're not reeling. Couldn't tell if there was a fish on or if we were just snagged there. That was kind of weird. We're getting a little eyed here too. That was weird. So pretty good bite rate through the night. Again, kind of like our spot set mosquito when you see a spot where it seems like everything's 
biting there. It's a good sign. Honestly, right now I could see just going, you know, like if you've got three feeders, I think I would go two maggots and then one, you could try regular worm or red worm, but we'll see during the day that could change some during the day. I don't know how many chub we're going to catch during the day. It just depends. Sometimes chub really are like super active in the evenings and night, but not as much during the day. It just depends. We got to be careful. We will eventually hook into something here that will just be too much for our little spinning starter spinning thing. Okay, so let's um, let's see if it's changed at all. What do we want? Let's go back to one meter so that we don't have to worry about. Or we can do one point three. See how that goes. See if that's sitting flat. Yeah, we're good. Let's see if it's starting to pick up on float too. Uh-oh. And these chub are trying to wreck my gear. Nope, 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 nope. Red worms. Uh, all right, so what hook sizes do we have? The highest I have is 11. Okay. Well, I 
That's a nice rough. Let's try 11 with maggots. See what that does. So we've got maggots on two, one size 14, one's 11 now. I do like that we're catching rough though. That's pretty sweet. Um, we could try a really small hook. Maybe try not to bust our stuff with those chub on float fishing. So we're down here, way up here, at the, right before camp at the turn. Usually you can do really good float fishing over there. I might catch a lot of bait fish and stuff, so small fish that you can turn into bait later on. Down here, the float fishing might just not be as good. I've been surprised we haven't had more bites in this little area, but it just feels like there's a lot of chub in the water. So... We could always, now I don't know if that little feeder will sit. Um, we actually could try it with just that. And let's go uh, 18 hook. We'll try red worm. Kind of in the same spot. We'll see if this, if this sticks, though, or if it floats down the river. I think it's going to sit there. The current's not that strong in this area, so we should be good. So we've gotten quite the collection of rough. One marker white bream, two marker ides, one marker roach, and five chubs that were markers. It's been pretty good. My problem is that I always, uh, at this level especially, I just, I just start to miss mosquito. Maybe just be familiarity, I don't know. One eleven, one twenty six. that's the other place we could try. I think that's farther up. Maybe we'll do that before we leave. Um, I think, I think Amun was, was thinking that this spot might be the stronger of the two, but we could go by and try it while we're here. Now, I've got a theory about why we caught that white green, but let's wait and see if it happens again. Is that another chub? Yeah, and this is a bigger hook now with the maggots. Woo! Okay, hold on. That's a nice one. I'm gonna have to see. So these chubs are not that much in terms of XP. They're okay. Um, we'll have to see how much silver they are.
See, I would love that. Like if, if this spot had the amount of chub that we're catching, but also had like constant roach and other stuff in between the chub, that would be even better. I mean, I still think this spot is great. Like if you're just looking for a change from mosquito, this spot seems to be a really good option. And we'll see when we go look at silver. I might be surprised. Like roaches here at Winding, at least they used to sell for a nice a, a nice amount. And Chubb might too. We might get some decent cafe orders. I don't know. But we'll see. All right, one more fish, then let's go check that other spot just to get a feel for it. At least two bites at the same time going here. I think the third one might be getting a nibble too. Yeah, there we go. All right, that one's actually on. All right, this is the bigger hook one. Is that another chub? No, it's a roach. Nice roach. All right, let's see what's on the small hook red worm. It's another white bream. So my theory on those white bream is that actually the ground bait I'm using may be scaring them away because I wasn't catching them when I had it on without ground bait. All right, what was the other spot that he mentioned? Uh, 111, 126. Let's just go try this real quick. I think there's also a spot. For uh, float fishing that I was reading about earlier. I don't know if I can find it though. We're looking for 111, right? Yeah, I fished here a lot too. In fact, this is basically the spot I was talking about where you used to be able to just um, uh, catch lots of bait fish on, tele on float. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Uh, 
let's see. Let's do the red worm check here too. I haven't been shoveling, guys. Shame on me. We're almost at 10% now. I gotta buy some more food or make some food. I guess we'll buy food. We'll just make tea. So this is often a good spot if you're, you know, if it's into the future and you have stumbled upon this video, spots change and everything, but this spot is often good. Um, for a lot of different things. All right, so there's a bream, that's interesting. So this might be a spot to check at night. Is that drifting? Or is there a fish on? <laughs> oh, look at it. It's a river mussel. If I was on my main account, I could turn that into bait. So the current could be a little stronger here, but let's see if it's sitting. Yeah, it's sitting. Mm -mm. I think it faked me out. No, it really is on. For a second there, I was like, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, a nace. Okay, that's cool. I really like catching nice nace. So this is 111, 126. I guess we're still clipped at whatever, six or seven from the last one, but you really just wanna throw out here, you know, kind of into the middle of that, the hole that you're in front of.
Wow. Wow. Big river mussel on red worms. I don't know what the bite rate on this is going to be, but that is interesting to sort of um, sort of cat catalog away in terms of uh, for high level players wanting to farm gold baits for sturgeon and stuff. So a little chub, what time is it? 15.02. Man, we are catching bream here, aren't we? What is this, an eyed or something? It was just sitting there not doing anything. That was a chub. We caught 40 fish here already. Alright, so four for six. Let's see what the uh, roach are worth here. It's about the same, honestly. This cafe order isn't that good of a deal because we caught markers, and this order could have been for sub markers. Uh, we didn't catch zebra mussel, we caught river mussels. Uh, we didn't catch an eye that big. Oh, we did fill the. Um, the white bream order for 22 silver. That's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. Yeah, and this Crucian uh, Gibble order would be easy, but they're not worth that much. And we just go over to the pond. It'd be cool if we could get into like the bigger white bream, but we didn't really find consistent white bream. Look at that though. 72 silver. So that's where it comes in between the rough and the chub. That's good money. You could really zero in on, like we had the chub pretty good. We were catching marker chubs. But if you could really zero in on rough there, that could be pretty tremendous. So we're already back to well over 100 silver. It is not going to be that hard to, um, it is not going to be that hard to save up for the next gear we want. Yeah, I don't know. The silver seems really good there at winding. Even though I think that first spot, unless that second spot has like real bream at night, which it could. If it does, we might have to try that again to see if it does. But if it's got legitimate bream at night, that might be good. Let me check a couple things here, though. I wanted to see if any updates on uh, mosquito news? Let's look at the cafe orders while I'm looking at this other thing. Um, so that rough order would be pretty nice, and it is nighttime. We kind of know where to catch the rough now. Yeah.
That's 30 silver for that silly uh, rough order. We can make some more bread. Alright, so if we're going to set up for rote, uh, for red worm, for rough, sorry, do that. What size do we have on here? 18. Guess we'll stay with 30 gram. At some point it's worth going up to 60 gram for casting distance, but I don't know that we're at that point. Hmm. Those are cool. They haven't always had these in them in the game. That's neat. Um, okay. The other thing we need to do is make some more Crucian Gibble mix. And we need to be digging like crazy. All right, we want crackers, porridge, sunflower oil. We're going to do 14 meter clips, see if we can stay away from um, getting snagged too much here. I'm also thinking, I think we go regular worm on one. We're going to burn through these red worms so fast. It might be worth purchasing some at uh, winding eventually. We'll see though. It's gonna be hard to keep up with the demand. It feels like I'm using them more and more. I really like red worms, but. Clip of 14. Let's do regular worms here. I don't, I still don't know if like regular worms or maggots are gonna work better on rough, but let's try worms first. 
think worms work fine for rough, but we'll see. Okay, so we want to make Crucian Gibble ground bait. How many points do we have? It's just nice, like, the higher quality ground bait you make. How much does that matter at this point, though? We're still sitting on this one point. I think we'll just put it into that. We're already getting some nibbles there. Roach, which is fine. Decent silver. First fish off regular worms. It's like a little bream. This is the spot that with regular worms, I every once in a while catch like a one kilo bream. It's kind of interesting. So far, knock on wood. No, um... There's a little rough. Look at him. It's a decent one too, I think. Should be a marker. So far, no snags. It's gotta be a rough, right? That's perfect for the uh, cafe order. It's not for eating the bread is for leveling up bait harvesting baits should make like probably a couple thousand pieces of bread to get points as well as dig a bunch it just depends on how fast you want to get there if you want to get there faster make a lot more bread if you're okay with being patient then um, do a lot of digging but the faster you get to those higher level baits, the faster you're going to be able to catch and target really nice fish. All right, let's check our rods here. I doubt that's a rough. It's a roach. Wait, did that say snagged? No. Okay.
wind is strong. 4.6 meters per second. Some spots like over there, it's probably worth it or fine to use a float instead of the third feeder. This spot when we're going for rough, it's just nice to have another line in the water. The, the float was so slow over here, comparatively. Let's try putting, um, we're just going to put some cracker ground bait on here. So as you just saw, I still leveled from making cracker ground bait. So all I'm doing is using a base. And so if you're trying to level making ground bait really fast, that's what you do. Just whatever the like, highest level base ingredient you can use just just make a bunch of stacks of those and you can fish with them or it sometimes it's just worth throwing them out and not taking up inventory space but i just want to make sure that uh you know it's kind of nice to get the bonus from using ground bait but at the same time you don't want to use ground bait that's like got some ingredient in there that maybe is keeping the fish away i feel like these rough will don't really care it seems like they bite the gibble crucian mix plenty but just to be on the safe side i thought we'd try this real quick Record setting rough if that's a rough. There we go. They might go on and get in a couple more, like get maybe like 20 more loaves of bread, just sit here and craft bread to level up our bait harvesting. I mean, it's relatively speaking, it costs so little silver to purchase bread and, and just be leveling it up. And the benefits you'll get down the line. Um, the other thing we could do is go to winding it with potatoes. I'll try to remember to do that. It wouldn't be bad for us to have a few potatoes to try for commons every once in a while. 
Uh, in safe places, at least. But we're just trying to get to Pearl Barley so that we can start getting to other things, too. But Pearl Barley will be worth using in some places. Sometimes Pearl Barley gets really hot going even like... I'll be curious to see if we might catch white bream off pearl barley if since they're not biting the worms as much as they do sometimes. I think everything might have fish on it. Alright, all right, it's a rough. That's something big. Is it a marker? Nope, not quite. We need to get we need to dig some red worms right here. Shoot. Look how fast we got another bite on worms there. This is a marker. I think it's just gonna be past marker range. Yeah. Yeah, so now that we're using that cracker base, does it feel like regular worms is all of a sudden catching rough really good again? Maybe the ground bait's actually working against us with the rough? I don't know. I shouldn't have to drink tea again that fast. But energy is not moving very much. We could start buying sodas and drinking soda and tea together to increase that. Uh... We're going to give it an, a couple fish here. Starting to feel like we are not. Um... Red worms not doing much better than regular worms on rough right now. Did you notice we didn't get a point for that? It'll start happening more and more. Thirteen point six. You know, past like twenty percent or so, it might not be worth making bread as much. I don't know where the cutoff is. Digging still gets points a lot. Past 20, probably potatoes. Might be good to wait and make potatoes then. All right, is this another rough? So maybe red worms are doing it's doing their thing. Let's go check the cafe order. I think we have enough non-marker rough now to um, That's a roach. Nice roach. Rough order. How many do we need? Five? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. 30 silver. That's just sick. That is sick. All right. Do we think we can catch white bream? What if we try these? Let's, let's try this real quick. We've, we've called our rough order. So let's go try the white bream real quick. I, I want to see if with red worm, if they might bite a little more. Please be a rough. First trophy on this account. Come on, come on. It's a roach. Any uh, wagers on what the first trophy will be for this account? 
Last time I did this, it just happened to be that Crucians and Gibbles were absolutely on fire here at um, here at Mosquito. So I'm pretty sure the first trophies were a true Crucian and a Gibble much earlier than you typically would see on leveling. Uh, but a lot of times my first trophy, like on my main account, my first trophy was a common roach and that's not uncommon for me on these leveling series. All right. So what we want to do here is, uh, um, we want to go to 25. You want to aim for like right there basically so that you're going right through that 25 it's a little right but not bad we actually could have backed that up a little more i think yeah it's like stopping right at the right spot and then we're also going to put as sort of a test regular worm in and when we unlock pearl barley we'll do this with pearl barley too you normally can catch really nice white bream from here and when you can it is so fun because it makes between the rough and the white bream you feel like you're just stealing you get so much silver these easy orders, but white bream right now, for whatever reason, hasn't been easy. So I was going to play, uh, I mean, I was going to make two of these leveling videos tonight, but um, I ended up playing dead side for a while with, uh, on stream after streaming this, I actually did stream Russian fishing Four tonight. I don't think there's anything from there from my Russian fishing Four stream that I'm going to put on YouTube though. Cause we really didn't hit any great spots. We were testing a lot of stuff and none of it worked out great. So. I probably won't upload any of the stream, but you can go back and watch the VOD if you're just really wanting to see more content. Um, but we did stream a little bit of Dead Side, and because of that, it just ended up going late. So to make up for not doing two videos tonight, I'm probably just going to make this one. I mean, we're already really long on this one, and I'm going to keep going a little longer and just do a little longer episode here. It's slow right here, isn't it? Although it's possible we've got fish on and they're just sitting there. I think we go ahead and check. Let's see if anything's actually on. Okay, what's this? It's another rough. Uh, it's another rough. Okay, hold on. Let's see what this one is. I just don't think the white bream are active right here. Uh, 
Um, so hopefully they'll become active uh, in the coming days. I, it's just so fun to be able to catch white bream. All right, so let's go try something else. So there's one more spot I want to try that we haven't done yet. And um, we'll just do it for a few minutes and then we'll go make some more silver. We're going to be up to like easy 150, I bet. So I think I've mentioned this spot, but we haven't actually fished it yet in this series. But it's another one of those spots that's often pretty dang good. And it, oh wait. We have fished here, haven't we? Well, we'll try it again. All right, so let's go, uh, let's try to catch a couple big boys here. We definitely want to move back to the Crucian Gibble mix. Usually it's like a nine clip. Um, let's go one right in front of us. And one right over here. I meant that to go a little bit straighter. this one and I will put this right and I'll try to move that middle one a little bit more left possibly but we'll see so we should be seeing crucian and gibbles my hope is that we might see a fat one a real fat one um, back our build back our red worms a little bit while we're fishing for crucian and gibbles there's another crucian so we kind of want to go on the right side of the weeds there we go So what was I thinking of? I was thinking of this spot. This is what we haven't fished yet. This also can be good.
There's a gibble. Oh, that's a roach. So what is the point in which you can start to use boilies? Like, we can't use boilies on this, can we? I mean, if we did a carp hook here, I can't remember. I'm thinking it's not until I don't know. I should try that. We should double check that. Let's double check that before we get off from this episode. Yeah, I'm just not sure. Guess I'm thinking, I mean, I was, I had in my head that you couldn't use boilies until, maybe classic, the classic rig, but I'm just not sure. We need to double check. That means we're gonna have to buy a cart hook. Because some of the boilies in this spot may catch trophy gibbles and, and crucians. Uh, it might be a slower bite rate, but it might be worth trying. It could be some fun experiments for our, for our leveling while we're just kind of mixing it up a little bit. So you're seeing worms are catching really nice gibbles as well, just like the bread does. It's just nice to have a spot where, it, since you make so much bread for leveling up crafting, I mean, bread is just awesome here. And you can get trophies on bread. It's just, I feel like it's not as often. What is this? Just poke your head up above water before you pop off so I can see what you are. Before you take off across the lake. I have no sense in which that we're stopping him at all. Maybe, maybe, I think he's still leaving more than we're taking. I just want to know what you are though. It could be a common carp, it could be a tench. Oh wait, hold on, he almost popped up. Okay, just peek your head up, peek your head up. What is that? It's a perch. I forgot about perch. Could also be a perch. Yeah, a worm catches perch a lot down here too, huh? So good. So what do you think? Is this better than that other hot spot? It's tough to say. That other one probably has a little bit more variety. They've got such, both have such good fast bite rates. I just know that this spot is going to produce trophies. The other one might too though. other one might too. <coughs> Excuse
Excuse me. <coughs> We're starting to not get points for bread. <coughs> Here we go. Such good fishing. kidding me. The float fishing can be good down here too. Gotten some nice fish, nice fatty crucian gibbles, some roach, some rough, marker bream, I don't know, 30, 40 silver probably. And we did all that pretty decent fishing at uh, winding as well. It's been a good session. not been catching sleepers though if we had stayed in that spot we were just in with worms the sleepers would have started biting there pretty soon sad about the white bream we would have eventually gotten there on the perch but that's not a big deal all right so 43 more silver look at those rough all right we're up to 152 let's try something here let me make sure that I'm not um, forgetting how this works. Jeez. That's an expensive experiment. So you can't use this carp hook until you're 12. So we can't find this out until we hit level 12. Okay, hopefully I'll remember. I guess I'll just test it on my main account and then I'll let you know next episode. Okay. So we're at 152 silver. Yeah, that, that way we don't waste that much silver on a carp hook if we can't use it yet. Um, $14.50. 
14.9. Let's see if we can hit 15 here. I really wish they had something at 15%. Like we just hit 15% on harvesting baits. I wish they had something at 15 and at 20, uh, you'd have pearl barley. So to not have something between 15 and 20, I guess we just keep digging and we'll make a bunch of potato cubes. Honestly, I wanna start going after common carp at like a fairly early level. My original idea was to go with that carp rod, but it doesn't make sense because of the reels, but we'll still see. I, I do want to push it with, with common carps pretty early though. Okay, I think we're good. 150 silver, we are well on our way. The other thing to think about, and I guess I'm sort of at a point where we have to really decide, like, am I gonna commit to a lot more float fishing? Like when we get to Old Berg, am I gonna keep one float out a lot? Um, I mean, if I am, we need to upgrade again. And then we can start being more aggressive with float. So that's another decision I need to make. If y'all have any preferences or feedback, let me know. Um, I feel like I either want to go keep doing float or as soon as we can um, use picker rods, which won't be that long because of how fast we're leveling bottom fishing we could do two feeder and one picker and kind of look at the differences in a picker rod. Um, that could be interesting too. So we'll see, I don't know, but if y'all have any feedback, let me know. Okay. Thank you all for watching and I will look forward to seeing you next time. As always, tight lines, 